Hi everyone, every December I go through publishers catalogues and I make a list of my most anticipated book releases for the following year and then I make a video about it. So I did that in December last year, I'll link that video in the description box down below and then normally around about June, July time I'll make a most anticipated releases for the rest of the year because in December not all of the announcements have been made for books coming out the following year. This year has been, you may have noticed, different to other years. So some book releases were pushed back because of COVID. So consequently, over 600 books were published on what is known as Super Thursday, which is in September. And it normally is a day when lots of books are released anyway, the most um, pushed books for Christmas. Christmas. But this year, so many books came out because they'd been delayed from spring when all of the bookshops were shut. So, the video that I made in December, whilst it was accurate at the time, ended up not being quite so accurate as time went on, and dates in June, July were still a bit murky for the rest of the year, so I've held off making this video until now. At the weekend, I asked on Instagram if you would like a most anticipated releases video, or a, if you like this, you will like this video. The results were slightly inconclusive, but it was tipped just over to be this one as the winner. So I'll make the other video in the next few weeks and post it then. So today I'm gonna to talk to you about my most anticipated releases for the second half of the year. I have three piles of books scattered around me and also a list on my phone. So the three piles of books that we have, I've got books that came out this half of the year um, and were my most anticipated releases and I've read them. I have a pile of books that have come out or are going to come out that were my most anticipated releases that I haven't read yet. And then I have a pile of books that um, I haven't even hauled yet or showed in any videos that are some of my most anticipated releases. And then I have a list on my phone of all of the books that I have on pre-order that are coming out through the rest of the year. And I'm gonna to talk to you briefly about all of them. I will list all of the titles in the description box down below. And I would love to know in a comment down below if you're excited about any of these or if you're excited about anything else that's coming out I'm sure I've forgotten some things or haven't even found out about some books yet um, because even though I do search through publishers catalogues and pay a lot of attention there's always more exciting books to discover so let me talk to you about these I'm going to start with the books that I've already read this is Pew by Catherine Lacey which came out I think about a month ago and I loved it I'll link my review down below but in short I describe this book as Shelley Jackson's The Lottery meets the film Get Out. This is Michelle Faber's first middle grade book called D, which is coming out this week. I'm gonna be talking about this in more depth in a video soon and chatting with Michelle. I know, knocked over this pile of books. And chatting with Michelle as well and getting up to some ridiculous things. So I will talk about it there, but in short, this feels like a warm hug and it has references to Alice in Wonderland and The Wizard of Oz and Jane Thurber and it's just, it's great. This is Earthlings by Siaka Murata, which I read at the very beginning of this year. The finished cover looks like this, and this is also out this month. This is the author of Convenience Store Woman. It's translated from the Japanese by Ginny Tapley Takamori. And this pushes the boundaries of what humanity is and how we respond to trauma and want to distance ourselves from other humans. It is bizarre, and I loved the experience of reading it. I've mentioned this a lot, this is Outsiders, which is an anthology that's out this month. Pre-orders have already been sent out. The collection of stories about what it means to be an outsider with stories by Kersey Logan, Julia Armfield, Leonie Ross, Ellie Williams, um, Stephanie Victoire, and me, and uh, lots of other people. It's brilliant, I loved it. Yes, I'm biased. You should buy a copy. All right, let's talk about the books that are my most anticipated releases that I have hauled but haven't yet read. So let me whiz through these because you'll have seen them in other videos. This is Summer by Ali Smith, the fourth book in her seasonal quartet. This is Mexican Gothic, which I definitely want to read in the next month or so. And it is by Silvia Marino Garcia. This is about a haunted house in the 1950s, here for it. Um, this is Summer Water by Sarah Moss, which again, I want to read soon because it is set at, actually I think it's set in June, but it's a miserable summer's day and it's raining a lot. So I feel like we can edge into autumn with this and that's not a problem. This is a book that's set on a um, trailer park in Scotland over the course of, I believe one day, lots of families looking at the other caravans and judging each other. And I think it's gonna be quite 
sinister this is one of those books that has been pushed so this was supposed to come out in may this is caris bray's third novel called when the lights go out but it was moved to june and then to november the audiobook is already out but the book itself in physical form is not coming out until november so this is a novel about a man called chris who's worried about the end of the world and climate change and his wife emma is sympathetic to his anxieties but is also trying to grapple with what's happening in the here and now she is amazing at writing family dramas this is a book that when i hauled this so many of you said it's your favorite book of the year so far so this is the yield by tara june winch and it's about a woman called august who's trying to save her family home and her ancestors land in australia and i think it's set across three timelines or at least it has three narratives yes it says told in three masterfully woven narratives the yield is a powerful reclaiming of indigenous birthrights and an offering of hope for the future this is atesha moshveg's third novel and i realized i described it slightly incorrectly in my haul it's called death in her hands in the hall, I said that it was about a woman who was recently widowed, moved to a rural location, was out walking her dog and discovered the body of a woman with a note saying, this is Magda. That's not true. What it's actually about is all of the aforementioned things and she's going on the walk, but she doesn't discover the body of a woman. She just finds the note, which should have been attached to a body. It says her name was Magda. Nobody will ever know who killed her. It wasn't me. Here is her dead body, but the body isn't there. So then she's trying to work out if the note is a prank, if it's real, if it is real, what happened to the body, who is Magda, etc. It sounds even more intriguing than if she discovered the body in the woods. So that actually makes me slightly more excited. I bought this non-fiction book, which has just come out by Merlin Sheldrake called Entangled Life, How Fungi Make Our Worlds, Change Our Minds and Shape Our Futures. I thought it was too good to be true that a man called Merlin Sheldrake ended up writing a book about mushrooms and folklore, but it is his real name. I checked and he also has a brother called Cosmos Sheldrake. I mean, that's just really cool. I bought Rachel Joyce's new novel. This is Miss Benson's Beetle. It's her fifth novel. She also has a short story collection. Her books always make me cry. The way she writes families is so believable. She just manages to chip away at the surface in this unrelenting way until you're completely immersed. It reminds me um, of Caris Bray as well. So this is about Miss Benson, who would like to go on an adventure. She wants to forget about everything, go to the other side of the world and try and find a beetle which may or may not exist. So she advertises for a companion in the local newspaper. The person who responds is not quite what she had in mind, but the two of them set off together. I had mentioned in the hall that I wasn't sure if this was going to be a queer romance but I have been informed by people who have read it that it is not. It is a book about female friendship and I think the age difference between the two characters is quite big. Um, female friendship and queer relationships are things that we need more of like both of them we need more of in fiction so I will make my peace with that and I'm very excited to read this book and tell you more about it when I have. I bought this, which is a collection of myth retellings. This is Love in Colour by Bolo Babalola and it's mythical tales from around the world retold. Um, they're set in Nigeria, they're set in Ghana. So it's um, a myth retelling collection, but specifically focused on love. Then this is The Beauty of Your Face by Sahar Mustafa. I heard amazing things about this from Kendra, whose channel I will link in the description box down below. The blurb says, Afaf Rahman, the daughter of Palestinian immigrants is the principal of Nuruddin School for Girls, a Muslim school in the Chicago suburbs. One morning, a shooter radicalised by the online alt-right attacks the school. As Afaf listens to his terrifying progress, we're swept back through her memories, the bigotry she faced as a child, her mother's dreams of returning to Palestine, and the devastating disappearance of her older sister that tore her family apart. So, those are all of my most anticipated books that I have. Sorry, I tell a lie. There is a small pile of books that I haven't hauled yet, but are some of my most anticipated releases. This is After the Silence by Louise O'Neill, which came out last week. It's set on a remote island off the, co off the coast of Ireland, an island off the coast of Ireland. And this is about a murder that happened 10 years ago. Nobody knew who the murderer was. And then a documentary team go to this island to try and uncover 
what went on 10 years later and they find new evidence. She said it was highly inspired by the podcast West Cork, which is one of my favorite podcasts. So listen to that if you haven't listened to it already. This is Eat the Buddha by Barbara Demick, which came out last week. She's the author of Nothing to Envy, which is um, an oral, not history, but I get an oral recent history of um, people's experiences living in North Korea. So this is a similar setup, but this is the um, experiences of people who live in modern Tibet told from the point of view of inhabitants of one particular town. Her work is always vital and illuminating and I need to learn more about Tibet to be honest. So I'm very keen to get to that one. Then I bought the forward, the forward? Book of Poetry. I can't remember the title. The Forward Book of Poetry 2021. I always buy this anthology. I do find the title slightly confusing because it's always named after the following year, but I suppose once you start doing that, you can't stop. The Forward Prize is my favourite poetry prize in the UK. It gives three awards each year, one for best single poem published in a journal or placed in a competition, one for best debut collection and one for best overall collection. I was one of the judges for the prize in 2018, but I followed it since probably 2009. Every year the judges put together an anthology of some of the shortlisted poet's works and it's just a wonderful book highlighting the best poetry that's being published at the moment. So this is a collection of some of the Forward Prize 2020 shortlists as well as some commended poets that were picked for the individual poetry prize. This is a book that's recently been published by the British Library, part of a new series that they have. This is called Weird Woods, Tales from the Haunted Forests of Britain, edited by John Miller. I don't really feel like I need to say anything else about this. I think it's going to be a brilliant Halloween read and that's primarily why I bought it. Plus, Haunted Woods, yes please. And then this is a series that I was contacted about recently. It's being published in November. It's called Revolutionary Women. There's going to be three of them. And they are works translated from French into English of women whose voices have been obscured over time. They are feminist queer writings and I just think that they all sound brilliant. So The Woman of the Wolf and Other Stories, written in 1904, is perhaps the finest work by sapphic poet Rennie Vivian. Blending myth, fairy tale, story and Bible, Vivian creates powerful portraits of strong women who stand up for what they believe in and of the aggrieved men who trail behind them. And then this other one that they sent me is in the same series and it's called Three Rival Sisters by Marie-Louise Garner and this is translated by Anna Aitken and Polly McIntosh. The other one is translated by Carla J and Yvonne M. Klein. So Three Rival Sisters critiques the constraints of late 19th century society and explores ways in which both men and women were hurt by restrictive ideas about marriage. The title story tells the tale of Henriette, René and Gabrielle as they compete for the affections of one man, only to learn that marriage and happiness are not the same thing. An atonement sees a man awaken to find his wife dead, freeing him to marry the woman he loves, but haunted by the possibility that he may have been her killer. Steeped in wit, empathy and biting social criticism and with echoes of Jane Austen, Charlotte Perkins Gilman and Kate Chopin, the two stories in this volume show Garnier to be worth of renewed attention. And I look forward to receiving the third one when they have proofs of those. So, where's my phone? Those are definitely all the books who, that I have that are my most anticipated releases. Now I have, as I said, a list of books that I have on pre-order. And I also have a separate smaller list of books that I haven't pre-ordered, but that are on my... <laughs> my radar, books that I'm paying attention to and I may buy in the future, but I kind of want to see a few initial reviews from other people first. So I'll insert covers, knocking over all of these books, I will insert covers here as I talk about them. So the first one is a short story collection, which is actually already out, but I discovered it when I was researching books that are coming out soon that I might want to purchase. So this is I Hold a Wolf by the Ears by Laura Vanderberg. I mean, that title alone is great. These are stories that are set in many different places, including Mexico and Iceland and Italy and the US. It says that it's her first short story collection since Isle of Youth, and it is a collection of surreal, strange ghost stories, and I'm here for that. 
Then we've got Beastery by K Ming Chan, which is coming out in November. I think it may already be out in the States. And this is about three generations of Taiwanese American women who were haunted by the myths of their homeland. It's about queer desires, violent impulses, and buried secrets. All of those things are boxes that I like to have ticked. How brilliant does this sound? One evening, mother tells daughter a story about a tiger spirit who lives in a woman's body. Soon afterwards, daughter wakes with a tiger's tail. I don't want to read more of the blurb than that because I'm just, I'm excited by that premise. That's all I need to know. I have pre-ordered it. Then we have Leave the World Behind, which is also coming out in November, and it's by Room and Alla. It's about a couple called Amanda and Clay who head to a remote place. I think that they're in a caravan and then an older couple come to their caravan and say that there's been a power outage and that they need help so they invite them into their caravan but then I think it's more than a power outage and things are going wrong perhaps a pandemic I hope not a pandemic but something like disastrous is going on it says the TV and the internet are down, there's no phone service, the facts are unknowable, should Amanda and Clay trust this couple and vice versa, what has happened back in New York, is the holiday home isolated from civilization a truly safe place for their families and are they safe from one another? So um, it's supposed to be an amazing thriller and it's about parenthood and race and class and I'm here for all of those things. Another short story collection that I've pre-ordered that has just come out, so should be with me soon, is called Likes by Sarah Shun Lian Bynum. And this is, it said for fans of Karen Russell and Kelly Link and Ramona Ossabel. So I didn't need to know more than that, but it says, in a dance of lightness and gravity, Likes explores the full range and contradictions of our contemporary moment. Through unexpected visitors, school fairs, aging indie film stars, the struggle to gain a foothold in the capitalist shell game of work, the Instagram posts of a 12 year old, these stories of friendships and parenthood, celebrity and obsession, race and class and the passage of time form an engrossing collection that is both otherworldly and suffused with the deceitful humdrum of everyday life. There's a book about whales coming out in November, which I have pre-ordered. It's called Fathoms, The World in the Whale by Rebecca Giggs. It says that she encountered a humpback whale while stranded on her local beach in Australia and she began to wonder how the lives of whales might shed light on the condition of our seas. How do whales experience environmental change? Has our connection to these fabled animals been transformed by technology? What future awaits us and them? And what does it mean to write about nature in the midst of an ecological crisis? So I think this is part memoir. Uh, it's also about climate change and it's about whales, and I'm, I'm here for all of those things. Then we have a new book from Ed Brick Hitching, who's a friend of mine. He has written The Phantom Atlas and The Golden Atlas. His new book is called The Madman's Library, which is out on the 1st of October, and it is a book about books. I know that so many of you have bought his previous books and love them. I will insert some spreads here so you can see the kind of stuff that he does. He knows the most amazing facts about everything. And he puts them in books, which is where we want to read about them. There's a non-fiction book coming out from poet Amy Nishuka Matterhill called World of Wonders in Praise of Fireflies, Whale Sharks and Other Astonishments. It says, as a child, she called many places home, the grounds of a Kansas mental institution where her Filipina mother was a doctor, the open skies and tall mountains of Arizona where she hiked with her Indian father, and the chillier climes of Western New York and Ohio. So she's talking about well, it's her memoir, but it's also focused on nature and the world around her and all of the animals that she was obsessed with. Sorry, this is me in the future popping in when I'm editing because I just remembered that I forgot to tell you about one of my most anticipated releases, which is a new novel from Nikki French, which is coming out this month. They are the author duo who write the Frida Klein series, which you know I adore. Their new book is called House of Correction, and it's about a woman who's already been to prison, I think, for murdering someone but did she, didn't she? And then she comes out of prison and she goes back to the place where the crime was committed and things go from there. And I am so excited about that book. And then, as I said, I have a few books that are on my, my maybe pile that I'm keeping an eye on. So there's an inventory of losses, which is by Judith uh, Shalansky and it's translated from the German by Jackie Smith. And it's short stories focused on things that we have lost. She is the author of... I can't remember the title, but it's about islands that she's never been to. 
let me put the cover here, which I have read and enjoyed. Um, and this one is about sometimes islands that don't exist, um, but also about more mundane things or big historical things that no longer exist. So I'm, I'm curious about it. I'll keep an eye on it. Um, then there's a book called Ace, what asexuality reveals about desire, society, and the meaning of sex. And that's coming out this week. So it is a huge nonfiction book about ace identity. And I've heard some good things, but I want to hear reviews from other people first before picking that one up. Then there's a book called Piranesi by Susanna Clark. Now she is the author of Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norell, which I've tried to read before. I think I was just intimidated by its size. And also it was a very long time ago, over 10 years since I tried to read it. Um, but this just sounds so bizarre. So it's, it's, you know, on my radar, it says Perinesi lives in the house. Perhaps he always has. In his notebooks, day after day, he makes a clear and careful record of its wonders. The labyrinth of halls, the thousands upon thousands of statues, the tides that thunder up the staircases, the clouds that move in slow procession through the upper halls. It sounds like it's full of amazing magical realism. And then someone comes to the house, but he doesn't know who is in the house, where they are, and why they're there. Um, messages begin to ap appear, scratched out in chalk on the pavements. There is someone new in the house, but who are they and what do they want? Lost texts must be found, secrets must be uncovered. The world that Peronesi thought he knew is becoming strange and dangerous. I mean, I, the more I read that blurb, the more I think, that sounds pretty amazing. Then there's the Ghost Variations, which is by Kevin Brockmeyer, but I think it's only coming out in, Oct in October. It's only coming out in the States. Um, I will keep an eye out for a UK release date. It's coming out in October in the States, and it's a collection of over 100 ghost stories, and it sounds brilliant, and I like the cover, um, so I'll see if I can get my hands on that at some point. So those are all my most anticipated releases from June to the end of this year. Some of them I already have, some of them I have on pre-order. Are you interested in any of these? What books are you very excited about that are coming out or have just come out? Let me know in a comment down below. I hope you're having a good start to the week, and I'll be back with another video soon. Lots of love. Bye.